Hi there. Welcome to my video on what is a REST API. In this video, I'll give you a quick and a very high level introduction to REST APIs. The word REST is an abbreviation of Representational State Transfer. Yeah, that's a pretty long name and it is a complex subject as well. But if you are new to the company, the whole concept of REST and if you're really uh, you know breaking your head to understand what exactly is REST in and you know why is everyone talking about it I hope that this video will give you that non-technical explanation something that is very abstract without getting into too many details of what exactly is REST API and why is it preferred all right so with that being said let's start uh, with some examples So a REST API is a architecture or a design pattern that allows two systems to communicate over the web. We know this as client server architecture, right? So, uh, however, there are some problems with client server architecture. Let's look at some example before we jump into REST. And that way we also understand what are the shortcomings. So a typical client server architecture includes multiple clients, maybe a single server. And in the simple diagram that you can see that there are two clients exchanging data with a server. And while a client is connected to a server, the server has to keep track of what are the clients that are connected, how long, what is their authentication methods, and also what is it that is being processed or what is the service requested by each of these clients you see each client may have a different request for example here the client one is submitting a new request maybe for an update of the address the client two is simply check checking the status of an earlier request okay now there is a little bit of handshake that happens between a client and a server. We need to look at that in detail. So let me move over to the next slide. Here you see a client that has just initiated a connection to the server. So it says hi or in other words it's saying I want to initiate a connection because I want to request something. So the server responds saying who are you? Can you authenticate yourself? So the client is going to respond with the credentials. Then the server is the server. If the credentials are valid, the server responds saying that, okay, you are authenticated now. What, how can I help you? Right. Or what service do you want to request? While this is happening, the server creates something called as a session. Now session, you can think, you can think of it as a workspace, a part of memory that is occupied or uh, a part of memory that is allocated for this specific client's request. So the session is going to hold information about who is the client, what is their credentials, what is their request and many other details that that are related to that process or, or to that request. Okay. So then there is some additional handshake. In this case, the client is saying that, okay, you know, I want to update my address. That is the request that I want to place. And all of this is, you know, continuously recorded into the session. And the server responds saying, okay, you know, send me the details or whatever. So there is a continuous handshake, a request and a response from the client and the server. While all of this happening, all these details of this handshake and the request is being stored or captured in the sessions. So continuing that previous example, here you have the client giving some additional information to the server. Now this time, the server sends an acknowledgement saying, okay, I have received your request and I'm processing it, but the client isn't ready to receive. The reason could be several maybe there is a temporary network disruption because of which 
the server is not able to communicate the status to the client right uh, while all of this is happening the session still exists on the server right again the server tries after waiting for maybe a few seconds or a minute the server tries again saying okay i need more details still there is no communication with the client for whatever reasons right the server tries one more time right the moment it sees that okay the client isn't there it is going to kill the session on the server the reason is while the session is retained it is consuming precious resources on the server both computing memory and maybe storage as well while really all these resources if freed up can be allocated to new clients right the other clients that are connecting to the server so it waits for a certain threshold we which you could call it as a timeout and then it kills the session right so all the information is lost then maybe within few seconds the client responds saying any update the network is restored now and the server says who are you right so it's back to square one the server has lost all the information about the client now this is a problem that was faced by all the web servers couple of years ago right uh, because of this architecture which is of a client server architecture the idea is that client sends requests server processes them and while that is happening it has to retain the connection it has to maintain constant communication with the client so this architecture could not scale once we had mobile applications you see the mobile devices the, the growth of mobile devices has been phenomenal and they access various networks you use the 3g or 4g you immediately switch to wi-fi uh, you know you use your laptop and all of these have to connect to the same server so network disruption is expected to always be there right so how do you build an architecture that still works with this kind of a latency or un unavailability of network that is where we introduce the concept of rest okay in rest architecture the client when it initiates a communication it already has all the details so here you can see it's saying hi i want to initiate a connection these are my credentials this is the service I'm requesting and these are the details all the details are collected in something called as a payload it could be in form of a file like a JSON or CSV file and once the payload is ready it is sent over to the server it usually happens over the HTTP port which is port 80 or 8080 right the server collects all this information and sends back an acknowledgement saying yes it's all updated the process the, the request was successfully processed now this is the happy version of it right this is the best case scenario let's look at a worst case scenario for rest architecture so this time again you have the client requesting the same information and when the server wants to communicate back to the client the client is not reachable again due to some temporary network disruption now what happens next the client will place the request again this time again with all the details and the server accepts it and processes the request now the thing to note here is the server does not maintain any session the reason is all the data that would have stored in the session is here in the payload itself starting from the credentials to the kind of service and the service details everything is part of the message exchange itself so there is no need to store any sessions on the server which means the server can continuously manage multiple clients and it can easily scale up so uh, 
earlier servers were only limited to processing around thousands, ten thousands of requests. But thanks to the REST architecture, the servers are now capable of managing millions of requests and they are easily scalable. And there are many products that follow the REST architecture. So in a nutshell, this is what REST is. When, when we say representational state transfer, meaning the state of the request is within the request itself, right? So here the credentials, the what is the service being requested, the service details, everything goes as part of one payload. So in a way, some of the processing from the server has moved to the client, right? The client is spending a little time preparing the payload, preparing the complete request and sending it in one go instead of multiple handshakes. Okay. So this is the REST architecture. And this is, uh, uh, this is perfectly suitable uh, in this, uh, you know, in this day and age. The reason is you have multiple devices uh, such as uh, laptops, servers, uh, mobile, tablets, all of these have something in common, which is the ability to access HTTP, uh, ability to access data over HTTP URL, right? So when we say HTTP, we are referring to port 80 or 8080, uh, the most commonly used ports. So the REST architecture, uh, as per the architecture, it is preferred to exchange data over port 80. Okay, so that way, whether the client is a mobile or a laptop or a computer, it really doesn't matter. The web server can serve all of their requests uh, almost in a similar fashion. So this is what the REST architecture is all about. Now, I hope you found this video useful. Of course, this is not the, uh, you know, the complete details of REST. There is a lot more that you can uh, read up. So just to quickly summarize, REST stands for representational state transfer. In this, the servers maintain no sessions at all about the clients. That way they are easily scalable. And also since we are using port 80 and 8080, which is the HTTP protocol, any changes to the web server really won't affect the web client. The reason is to, today you may be using Microsoft IIS. Tomorrow, you may choose to change it to Apache Tomcat or some other web server. But as long as they are, as they have, uh, as they expose the URLs over port 80, it means absolutely no changes to the client. Okay. And this makes it technology agnostic, meaning you can keep changing the technology as long as the port is the same the client and server can, can still talk to each other. So this was a quick intro to REST API. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please remember to give this video a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be back with more such videos on complex topics explained in as simple terms as possible. Thank you for watching this video.